All right guys, welcome to another little uh, painting tutorial where today we're gonna be turning uh, another cartoon character, kind of like my last video, uh, into a detailed painting. This is gonna be more um, around like a, kind of more like a quality, like something that still retains its cartoonish charm, yet it's very highly rendered. As opposed to the last video, I was just focused on turning the cartoon character into more of like a gross, uh, caricature like something that would be used in Spongebob or uh, Misadventures of Flapjack stuff like that. Uh, this is more focused on retaining his uh, the characters like cartoonish charm I guess so here's a little Viking character that I made uh, just start by doing like a rough sketch but really make sure it's structured well um, take some time to make sure you're rendering out the character and his proportions are right so it's uh, I don't know doesn't look messed up to to start off with and then I block in rough kind of values uh, pink more pinkish uh, skin tone for this one my other one was a lot had a lot more of like a blue base than a red base uh, which makes it look more greenish brown as opposed to a warm kind of pinkish skin tone um, and then you're gonna want to focus on values of dark and light a lot um, before you actually start uh, getting into the details. So here I spend quite a long time messing around with the light and shadow. Um, I kind of experiment with adding some uh, colder tones, like adding the blue over the shadow, uh, makes it look more purple and then more warmer stuff. Uh, even there I try to kind of mess around with some green, but it went a little too far. Um, and this is just constant reworking, painting over stuff. Uh, making it try to make it look as uh, best uh, kind of as possible it, it helps to uh, take a step back and kind of squint and look at your values see if you can still tell what the shapes are um, this is supposed to be a pretty high contrast painting so the shadows are pretty dark uh, as opposed to the highlights which are a lot lighter uh, there's a lot of range of uh, light to shadow in this uh, which is just kind of like the style, because I, I like to make my cartoon characters when I'm rendering them as paintings. Uh, adding a lot of the contrast makes it kind of ironic because it's, it's cartoony, yet it's all dramatic. Um, and now, since I've got the values looking something similar to what I want, then I kind of start making my brush smaller as I add more and more details. Um, this character is a little chubby dude, so I kind of add shadows under his like flaps of skin. Um, and then at this point, once I'm satisfied with my, my values, I'll kind of retrace the, the outline, the line work over on the layer that I'm doing the values in. So I keep the line work and the, the values on a separate uh, layer because I end up getting rid of the line work. Um, but then I like to take a darker skin tone and redo the line work over the rest of the outline. Um, just so that I can then start, I can see the whole character and start to paint with the line work uh, and kind of uh, work it into the character. Uh, my brush size keeps getting smaller uh, as I'm going because then it makes the details better. Uh, make sure you <laughs> a lot a lot of time to, to nipple rendering because that's very important. Perhaps the most important part of the painting. Uh, once I've got uh, that done, uh, as I kind of render it out then at a certain point I'll feel it's appropriate to get the background in there so that I can work it uh, to look right with the background. Uh, it's I've started since then putting the background in first because um, it is important with that but uh, for this particular painting I just put the background in midway through. Uh, here I'm just going through slowly adding more and more detail, more shading through all the folds of the character's neck uh, and trying to make sure that it still kind of fits, uh, make sure everything makes sense, like it has a place to go. I mean this isn't the most anatomy accurate character because it's a cartoon character but um, within his own made up anatomy making sure that like his, his chin 
uh, that kind of fat under his chin is like sitting on top of his chest, uh, but also morphing into it, not like it's it, like a beard or anything, it's still skin, uh, but just adding the right little folds and the shadows on those folds uh, helps make it look more three-dimensional. One thing that I'm chiefly doing in this um, this section of the painting is I am just focusing on the skin. I mean, as you notice, I haven't even copied the line work for the mustache or his helmet details or the straps on him. Uh, I'm leaving that all in the line work on the layer above because here I'm just focused on the tones of his skin. Uh, here I'm adding more details to the eyelids and everything to make it look more like it's a, a real uh, something that would exist in reality, yet he's just shaped really weird, shaped like a cartoon character. Because uh, when it comes down to my s style for this, it's more... The shape is obviously altered from reality, because he's a cartoon character, but trying to make the skin and the texture of how everything looks as similar to reality as possible, which has kind of a cool effect, um, seeing cartoon characters that you aren't used to seeing, like this, being rendered out in full... Um, full force. And you can start to see the right half of his face is taking shape. Uh, it's always easier for me to render out the darker parts uh, because it's, it's fun to kind of mess around with the shadows where I find highlights to be a bit more difficult. Um, I get them done nonetheless. Here I'm sort of shaping his eyebrow area like just the brow of his head but not the actual eyebrow so that it could kind of fit his uh, face better like the eyebrow would rest on top of that the hair itself will rest on top of his head so I, I kind of rework his forehead a lot here as you'll see And here I start to figure out uh, how I want the planes of his face to shape. Uh, and, it's, and it's still important to kind of think of how a real head skull would be structured uh, with the brow, um, like the center of right in the middle of both your eyebrows, how it kind of folds into your nose. Uh, and then there's like shadows under the ridge of your, your nose and your eyebrow. Um, and then adding the appropriate kind of planes for the sides of your forehead and how everything gets into your forehead. You know, I actually go in a bit too early. Here's a good example of adding too many details too quickly. Uh, I hadn't even fully rendered out the, the values for the lips yet. I uh, start trying to go for detail, uh, which ends up getting erased. So it's just, I don't know, work that didn't end up um, resulting in anything, work that I undid. Uh, so it's important to kind of go through and make sure you're rendering out how everything should be shaped uh, and how the values look before you start adding in detail, because it's very important. Uh, I actually play around with the lips a lot and then end up completely reworking them uh, using a reference image. Uh, it's important to use reference images with things that you're kind of, um, you don't feel so strong in uh, because then it will just help structure things up a bit and add a bit more quality when you're looking at something. Like, don't have any shame in using reference images, they're very important. Here, like I said, uh, I'm a bit weaker working with highlights, um, but that's why it's important to 
to work on them, uh, make sure you get better. If you ever find yourself kind of becoming weak in one area or you figure out an area where you just haven't had any practice in yet, it's always important to just do it over and over again. Uh, try to focus on that until you can strengthen it and get it stronger. Uh, so here I reworked the values a lot um, and the highlight tones uh, in order to make it look like something that, that's, that's more realistic. And even as you're adding through like details in this section, it's still important to every once in a while zoom out and look at it and squint your eyes, make sure the values still look correct, make sure it looks like it makes sense. Here's we're closing in to getting the skin tones all rendered up uh, and all the wrinkles and everything. It's kind of looking like a strange alien ET creature without his uh, any of his eye like detail or his eyebrows or mustache or anything. He's looking very, very strange. Even trying to add more human characteristics uh, onto a character that otherwise wouldn't have these features like the little bump uh, right above his lips uh, where you know right under where his nose would be if the character had a nose um, the little bits I'm not sure what they're called but the little bits right in between like right uh, on the inside of his eye or his two eyelids meet uh, that little section of uh, I don't know it's like a different type of skin uh, just adding that in there to try to make it look more convincing. Rendering out the eyelids when normally on a cartoon character you wouldn't want to render out like his eyelid and socket and everything and the, the kind of structure of his eyebrow over and like a little fold of fat that's over his right eye. Um, just little details to try to make it look more more convincing um, and more more fleshed out like it could be a real thing. Now each time I uh, select the layer uh, of the sketch and make it visible, you can see how it started turning uh, to look more convincing as a real thing with real skin. Um, once you see the mustache like kind of composited over it, you can you can get the idea of how it's looking more and more uh, realistic, more and more rendered uh, and convincing as it goes on. You can see the character is still there. Uh, with the line work. It's still cartoony and charming looking and uh, cute and strange all at the same time, but now it's a lot more just detailed. Now at this point I started using a reference image and decided to completely reshape the lips because his lips uh, and mouth shape looked like uh, it didn't really look very convincing. It looked like he was holding it open in an awkward position instead of just resting, so I decided to make the bottom lip a lot bigger so his lip is only slightly open, like he's just kind of resting, uh, breathing through his mouth because that seems like something that this character would do. Using the reference image, just shape up the values again, make sure the values look great, and then I start adding in little details. Using a reference for this helped uh, make it look a lot more convincing. I got kind of the values of how light would uh, react off of lips, looking a bit better, um, getting darker as it goes as his lips go down like into his mouth uh, because his, his mouth would be casting more sh more of a shadow, obviously. And this lighting setup is kind of like a top down lighting, so that that little bit of uh, skin right at the bottom of his lip before it goes into his mouth would uh, obviously be darker. Here I mess around with rendering out his forehead, uh, kind of how his brow furrows together and how the skin can kind of fold over itself a little bit when you 
uh, kind of force your eyebrows forward to look a little bit mad. I mean, obviously he's not, he doesn't have an angry expression, but I thought it helped kind of sell how his skin uh, is like folding over itself, like uh, just kind of selling how this skin would, would work on a character like this, even though it doesn't necessarily match the expression, it still looks convincing and how the light is hitting his forehead, it helps with the little bumps and uh, to make it look more like it's shaped like a face instead of just a flat plane, if that makes sense. Finally, after seems like a few hours of me rendering just the skin on his head, uh, I've moved over to his body and working on the folds and everything. Good thing about having like a kind of pop belly like he does is there's a big section in the middle of his stomach that doesn't need to be rendered out that much. Just a very smooth, uh, plump little plane of his, you know, pop belly sticking out. Now that I'm done rendering his skin, I'll go through and kind of block in, uh, make sure the shape is right for his pants and his helmet, uh, clean up the edges, and then I just kind of render it simply, like I keep it one color, uh, and just render the light to dark and make sure it looks uh, nice, but simple. Because I'm going to be going in and adding details over it, and I don't want to go too overboard, I want to keep the details structural and simple, because it is just a cartoon character with a few extra added, well, basically like an added textures is kind of how you want to think of it. It's just still a simple cartoon character, but you're just adding textures over him. So here I'm making sure the values for the helmet are right. Uh, as the light's coming down from above, right at the very top of his helmet, it's going to be way lighter than at the bottom. Uh, and then I go in to add a slight little shadow from the brim of his helmet over his forehead, but it's not very thick. It's not like he's wearing a baseball cap or anything, so... I didn't want to get too carried away with that. Here I add some cooler temperatures to his helmet. Uh, helps with the contrast. Uh, cool and warm contrast always helps sell any type of painting that you're doing. Uh, even if it's a very cold painting or you want to go for a very cold painting, it's always nice to have a little uh, little place of warmth somewhere and if you have a very warm painting uh, overall uh, just adding you, you usually want to add a lot more cooler details uh, to help like make the warm parts pop so they the contrast between them is always gonna look nice if they're they're done right if they're done um, moderately enough you don't want to go overboard but uh, they're still nice to have So now here's really starting to come together. We're adding a new layer to render in his mustache and his eyebrows. And we're still using the same kind of techniques. We're just blocking in, make sure the shapes are right, and then getting the textures to and the values to look right with the light and shadow. It's pretty much all it just comes down to. A big part of this is getting the colors right uh, with the values, the light and shadow. It's gotta be convincing. Like this exists in space and it's affected by the light. So now really as I'm as I'm adding these highlights in, this is pretty much uh, reaching the end stage of me rendering his, uh, his mustache. It's nice to keep it simple since I went so overboard on his wrinkles, on his face and everything. Uh, keeping the mustache simple makes it so that we don't have too much to look at. Uh, it's kind of a nice contrast because uh, I could go in and you know, render individual hairs and everything, and making it more detailed like that would make it look nicer and might run the risk of making it cluttered.
Here he has little rope bands kind of tying knots in his mustache. Uh, and then I'm playing around adding uh, the whites of his eyes because I kind of want to keep the texture that was below it. So I was messing around um, with different type, like uh, setting it to multiply, but it didn't quite work. So I decided to just lower the opacity so that a bit of the original values uh, s stood under. And now really making eyes sell is how they shine in the light, the little highlights on them. Uh, adding multiple is usually a good idea. Um, make it make it look like his eyes are glistening, kind of glinting in the light. Even though he has very simple pupils, they're just black dots. They're no fancy irises. It's the it's the highlights that are making it it work. There again, I'm messing with the layer. Uh, just adding simple values on top of his little uh, bumps, the little, uh, I don't know what they would call it, like the embossed uh, metal parts of his helmet that are coming out. Uh, look like they're made of bronze or something. Uh, just just keeping them simple. They're still just basically circles with little points on them. Uh, and then working on the values, making sure that the light hits them from the top. I actually, when I start rendering the, the little bump on the left, uh, I kind of rendered the light wrong. I rendered the light as if it was coming from the left instead of more of the top left. So then I ended up changing that because uh, I tried to render it the same way as the middle one is. Uh, so like like this, see how it's the light is kind of coming to the left from the left instead of the top. So then I end up changing that just to make sure the lighting is more consistent. Here, doing the same thing as I'm finishing it up. Uh, the, the rim around the horn, uh, the little joint where it's actually connected to the helmet, making sure the lighting is still consistent from that, coming from the top. And as we finish this up, we're coming into the home stretch. The character is almost completed. Um, finishing up these lighting values. Adding in his teeth. I almost forgot to add in his teeth. Most of them are covered by the lips, so we didn't have to do much rendering. Just a little bit of shine on them, uh, variation, so they're not just white blocks. But uh, yeah, the last little details we need to add are the little details on his pants, um, which will be completed here shortly. Now here again, it's the same thing, keeping it very simple. It's just a few colors. Make sure that the light and shadow, the contrast looks right. And that's that does so much of the heavy lifting for, for details. Uh, there's sometimes where you don't, uh, sometimes you need to kind of look back and say, well, do I really need to put detail here? Does it does it serve the painting any better if it doesn't have it? Because if it if it doesn't need it, uh, most of the time you you don't want to waste time doing it. If it's not gonna aesthetically help the painting. Uh, so when I add the little straps on it over or on his legs, I just add a few black lines. And since there's already enough value on his legs from the shading, uh, it works. It doesn't need each individual bandage to be rendered. around with the lighting on his little ring here it's attaching the straps to his his pants and here's the finished product uh, there's one thing you mainly take away from this it's that values are very important it's all about values how the light hits is hitting the character uh, if you get that nail then it's gonna be hard to go wrong with any of the other details because it does a lot of the legwork Thanks for, for watching this tutorial, and I hope you learned something from it. Um, yeah, that's it. Peace.